All right, welcome to this uh, introduction video to discrete random variables. Uh, let's just jump right into it, then you'll have a you try section at the end. Um, basically, going to fill out this uh, learning card uh, to give an overview of it. Um, it's uh, we're looking at continuous versus discrete, and then we're going to focus on the discrete aspect of it. Um, if you had uh, pounds that you gained over Thanksgiving break, well, that's considered continuous. And you might say, well, I gained three pounds. Somebody else says, well, I gained ten pounds. But somebody could say, I gained three point seven and then 3.75 and 3.751, there's an infinite number of possibilities. We would visualize these with um, uh, area density curves, area density curves, and these area density curves come in several different flavors. This is a uniform distribution uh, where the probabilities of any uh, you know particular range has the same height, and uh, how you quantify this is uh, with uh, basically area calculations area calculations. So in this uniform one, it's kind of nice because it's just base times height. Um, but uh, with a, a normal distribution like this one, trying to find the base times height, well, that's not really going to give it to you. You have to go to calculus to figure out the area under a curve. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to quantify this one still with area calculations, but we're going to use uh, z-scores and uh, table A. All right, this particular video, I'm not going to get real well, about as far as I'm going to say about these because I'm really focused on discrete. And this is, you know, maybe other area density curves, and you might have to do some variations of area calculations. That's a triangular shape, so I might have to do base times height divided by 2. All right, so let's move on to the other kind, uh, which I mentioned was discrete random variables, discrete RV. And uh, family members that you saw over Thanksgiving break. Okay, so you can, these are countable, and that's the main difference. Uh, countable, and uh, the number of family members seen, uh, this is just a list, uh, zero through six, and uh, these are the probabilities. This is called a probability distribution table, and it's just a visual way to take a look at the numbers associated with it. Another way to visualize this is with a histogram, okay? Now remember, under continuous, we did uh, area density curves, but here um, the probability of a specific value has of getting, of, you know, having seen zero people, well, that was 10%. Uh, the probability of seeing one person, well, that was 15%, and so forth. And so there's actually probabilities associated with individual uh, amounts. And we're going to quantify these um, with some formulas and the expected value of a discrete random variable follows into this. All right, so it's the sum of each data value, and that's x sub i, times its probability, that's p sub i, and uh, that's all you do. And as this example, I'm going to kind of get this started, but uh, the first data value was a zero, and it came up 10% of the time. Plus, the second data value is one, and it came up 15% of the time. The second, uh, third data value is a two, and it came up 20% plus three, times 0.35 plus 4 times 0.10. You can see I'm going to run out of space, but you keep this going. Uh, 5 and then finally 6. So 5 times 0.08 plus 6 times uh, 0.02. And I would add all those up, and that would give me the expected value of this. Uh, I can't quite remember what it comes up to. Anyway, uh, the variance of x. Let's say this one, oh man, I don't, I don't have it on my, let's say it's came up to 2.7. I don't know if it does or not, but let's just say it did. Okay. And uh, so to find the variance uh, or the standard deviation, here's the variance, but here's the standard deviation of x. I'm going to take the square root. So whatever I say here for standard deviation, the variance is just without the square root. Um, I'm going to take the square root of the sum of each data value subtract uh, from that, it's uh, the mean, the one I just came up with here, square that difference, and then multiply it times the probability of each individual item. So, and uh, just to get this started, I would say, well, zero was the first data point, subtract 2.7, square that, and multiply it times its probability of 0.1, and then continue that process, add, go to the next data value of one, subtract the uh, fictitious uh, expected value that I came up with and so forth. All right, so that's pretty much how it's done. Um, I'm going to leave this with you. Well, you take a, you pause it here, uh, come up with these answers, and then I'm going to calculate them in just a second. So I'm going to get started in just a second. I'm just giving you a little bit second here to pause it. Okay, so with this done, 
uh, assuming you've done it. First question is, is um, what's the probability that x is exactly equal to 5? Well, it's, it's blank here, and so I need to do a little uh, subtraction, 1 minus everything else that's here, and I think that leaves me with 0 0.03. All right, so the probability of that is 0 0.03. The probability that everything is less than 5, well, or that it is less than 5, would be these three added together. So 75, 15, that's 90, uh, 95. Okay, so 95% or 0.95 is the probability that it's going to be less than 5. Notice I did not include 5 in the continuous random variables. You could get the probability of a specific value, but here it's uh, anything less. On average, how many math classes do you expect a graduating high school student to have? All right, so we would go, um, well, I'm going to do it up here. Let's see, 2 times 0 0.05 plus 3 times 0.15 plus 4 times 0.75 plus 5 times 0 0.03 plus 6 times 0 0.02. And you're going to have to bear with me for a second while I do that. As fast as I can. Almost. Hope I don't make a mistake. Okay. I hope I didn't make a mistake, but that came out to 3.82. And um, so that's what you should have gotten for the expected value. The standard deviation is going to be each data value minus the 3.82 squared um, times its probability of 0 0.05 plus the next one, 3 minus 3.82 squared times its probability of 0.15 plus continue that pattern until you get to the last one 6 minus 3.82 squared times 0.02 all right and uh give me just a second i'll have this done i'm actually going and putting these into uh, list one and list two uh, list one being the uh, the x values and then the probabilities into list two and i'm going to run one variable stats and with a frequency of list two all right so stat i'm calculating one variable stats using list two as my frequency and i confirmed that i got 3.82 there for my standard deviation oh don't forget i gotta square root this all right so i sum all those up and square root it and the standard deviation of x comes out to 0.654 rounded. All right, that's it. Hope you did that right and be ready for your test.